Hello, hello, and welcome to the Doing the Most podcast. I'm Shannon Fairweather, and I am your host. Today, I am so excited to be talking with a true Boston legend, (laughs) the greatest to ever play the game of Survivor, Rob Mariano, a.k.a. Boston Rob. Thank you so much for being here today. Quite an introduction. It's a little weird hearing you, like, go through it right here in person. (laughs) But uh, thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here, be home back in Boston, and uh, to partake in this. Yeah, this is, this is so awesome. I really appreciate you making time for us. I know you have a super busy schedule. So let's just get right into it. Uh, you've played a lot of Survivor, my friend. Um, in I fact, have. I have your appearances listed out right here. We have Seasons of Survivor, Marquesas, Survivor All-Stars, Heroes vs. Villains, Redemption Island, Island of the Idols and Winners at War. Man. That's a lot. So I've actually played more Survivor than anyone on the planet. You have the number one record? I figured. <laughs> I, do, I yeah. figured. So I for those who don't know, for our listeners who aren't aware, can you just give us a little summary of your Survivor experience? Which seasons did you win? When did you meet your wife? Give us give us the lowdown. Yeah. So like it's kind of crazy, but it started like almost 20 years ago. Yeah. I was a 25-year-old kid. The show came on, and I applied to be on it. I was on Survivor Marquesas. I left that game early. I made it yeah. like just to the merge. I'm going to try to remember it all. because it's, like, it's a lot. It's a lot. I made it just to the merge, and, uh, and that was it. And it was an awesome experience, and yeah. I had fun. Uh, about two years later, they decided they were going to do an all-star version of the mm-hmm. show. And they called me back. And I wasn't really, like, I didn't go very far the first season. Right. But I was one of the more memorable characters. Mm -hmm, For sure. So they had me back. And that season, like, I knew, I realized, like, I learned a lot from being on Survivor the first time. And, like, the most important thing is, like, when you get an opportunity like that, take advantage of it. Right. So here I am getting a second shot. And I just, like, went all out, straight focused, did everything I could to get to the end, made it all the way to the end with, of course, Amber, who's now my wife, and uh, then hedged my bet. Like, a lot of people don't realize there's two rules in Survivor. One, you can't physically hurt another Uh contestant, and number two, you can't conspire to share the money. So um, by me asking her to marry me before the winner was announced, I kind of skirted the rule on the second rule there on sharing the money. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, because you slid it in there before you even found out who won. Yeah, (laughs) Smart, smart. (laughs) Win-win. So ultimately, she ended up winning. And and I was really kind of like done with Survivor. I thought it was awesome. And we were happy and got married, did the amazing race once, twice. And then they had... um, They called back, like, I don't know, it was like six or seven years later for Heroes versus Villains. Yeah. And I was like, man, here's a unique opportunity to go and play with all these other characters that now I've seen play that I haven't got to play with before. It's been a while. Let's see if we still got it. Right. And everything that season was going really good for me. Like, I was crushing it. uh, And then Tyson kind of made a ridiculous blunder, ended up voting himself off. And then because of that, you know, ultimately I was voted off. Right, right. Um, and you play poker with him, now, right? That's yeah, I do. Now. I'm friends with him now. So <laughs> yep. after the show was over, we went to Australia for like three weeks. We were hanging out and he and I got to be really good friends. He's actually awesome. super sarcastic. You'd love him. Like, I feel like he has like... Even though he's not from Boston, I feel like he has that same Boston attitude. When someone's got it, you know. When they got it, they got it. No doubt. <laughs> so... um so that was that. And then uh, at the live finale of that season, of the Heroes vs. Villain season, Mark Burnett, who was the executive producer and creator of the show, came up to me. It was like, you want an opportunity to settle the score with Russell, you know, because he was kind of like a little nemesis uh-huh. with me that season. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So went out there and everything went right for me that uh-huh. season. You know, I just stayed focused the whole time. Uh, like truth be told, the Redemption Island, I feel like that was there in case right. Russell or I got voted out. It was a chance for us to get back into the game. But in all actuality, it started like to kind of work against me because not only did I have to vote people out once, right. but then I had to do it a second time. Uh, but ultimately, I got the win that season. And that was super exciting because 
you know, first of all, I don't have to hear, I'm the winner in my own house anymore. Right, now we both right, won. Right, right, exactly. Know? Even the tides a little bit. <laughs> right. And I got to the, uh, I felt like I got to the top of like, you know, the mountain. I conquered what I wanted. I accomplished my right. goal. It's a good lesson for people out there. Seriously. Like, you know, if you want something, work really hard at it. Don't give up. It took me four times before right. I was able to win the show. And don't quit, you know? Um, so that was it. And that was in 2011. And yeah. I'm at home. You know, Amber and I, we had started having more kids. We end up with four daughters. And we're just living life. I'm, you know, chilling, doing my thing. And then, like, about, well, it's about three years ago now. I think it was 2018. I was working on... Uh, I was working on a, a construction project on a house I had, and my mm -hmm. phone rings, it's probes. And I was like, man, I know, like, Jeff doesn't, like, he'll call me to say hi if it's like Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever, but Jeff doesn't call to shoot the shit, you know? Yeah. Like, he's like, here we go. Yeah. It's something. So he pitches me this idea of Island of the Idols, and immediately I turn it down. I was like, dude, like, I'm good. Like, I don't need to do this. Like, you know? Really? Yeah. And he's like, He's like, no, dude. He goes, I have this idea. I want, like, you and Sandra are, like, two of the most prominent characters uh -huh. on the show. We want you to come back and kind of mentor these new kids. Show them the rope. Show them, like, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Right. I was like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. He's like, listen. He goes, we're going to build a 40-foot high <sighs> statue of you. I was like, I'm in. Sold. Let's do it. Sold. Where is that thing yeah, now? It's still in Fiji. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, it was crazy. We flew, I flew to Los Angeles and like I sat in a chair and they had all these cameras that did like a 360 yeah. surround of my face to like pixelate it to make it sure it was That's right. That's amazing. And then they sent that image down to all that uh, footage down to New Zealand. The guys from uh, Game of Thrones right. built these enormous statues, put them on a barge. Like, you couldn't fly them. They put them on across a barge. Across the ocean. Across the ocean Your to face Fiji. went across the ocean. They had two, like, <laughs> excavators, like, assembling it. It was, like, the most ridiculous thing. And they're like, every day I'm out there and I look up and there's a huge <laughs> freaking statue of my head. And Basically was, to uh, sell you. Basically yeah. to sell you. It was a nice touch on the show, but I think it was like, how can we really get Rob intrigued here? <laughs> it, was, it was cool. And then like, uh, you know, unfortunately, some other nonsense went on that season that kind of yeah. detracted from it. But it was fun to do. And um, while we're out there, Jeff kind of like pitched me the idea of season 40, an all winner season to come back and play with everyone. Yeah. And here I am like gone for, you know, six weeks, seven yeah. weeks when you do these productions. And there's like a 10-day turnaround time. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Amber. She's like, no, I don't want to do it. I was like, you don't really have a choice. We kind of have to do it. Like Survivor's given us so much over the yes. course of our life, you know, yes. like. And I know what this is about. Like, yeah. you got to go out there. Like, every other person is yeah. coming for us, for sure. Oh, right? absolutely. Like, like I, we have reputations at this point. We're also a married couple. So, like, that's an alliance you can't break. Right. Um, I wish, like, some of the older school players would have been able to recognize that. People like Sandra. Uh, exactly. Just, like... Some of them realize that, like, we need each other. Yeah. Otherwise, these guys are going to pick us apart. Right. Because almost exactly what happened in Season 8 All-Stars happened in Season 40. And in All-Stars, Amber and I were not, like, the most popular contestants. Right. We're on the lower echelon of that. You got to remember, the first time I only, like, made it to, like, Day 21, I think. So, like, we weren't really on anyone right. else's radar. Their focus was on the big characters, the winners. Now, here it's a season of all winners, but all winners are not created equal either. Absolutely not. in the not. eyes of uh, exactly. the media and in the Absolutely. eyes of the other winners. Mm -hmm. So our target was definitely magnified. And uh, before the game started, because it was only 10 days between the start of 40 and the end mm -hmm. of 39, they didn't have time to destruct these huge statues so the entire season 40 cast goes by in a boat on the way to start the game and sees these huge statues of Sandra and I. 
And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that at that point they were like, okay, we got to get rid of him. Who should be our target? Yeah. Who should we start with? And I mean, I think like the best thing, like it's kind of crazy. Like because season 40 was like, it was fun to be out there with yeah. the winners. Ultimately didn't win, but like it was such a cool experience. And right. I think the number one thing, I'm so glad I went because the, my favorite thing that happened in all the seasons of Survivor happened in season 40. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. When your family came out. Of course. Like Amazing. Jeff surprised everybody. And my kids got to come to the island and like everything just like came full circle. Exactly. So that's like in a nutshell or longer than a nutshell <laughs> in a few a minutes. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like the experience wrapped up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you for going through all of that. Yeah. You, you mentioned a lot of great points there, but something I just want to touch on is how many days was that in total? Have you done the math? Have you lost I, count? I think it was 155 days. 155 days. That's because a on, lot on of survivors. 39, we left on season 39, we left three days early before the end of the game. Right. Like Sandra and I got to leave early. Right. Yeah. And, and technically, we weren't really playing those 36 game, days. So, uh, but I think, did I say 155? 155, you I said. I think it might be 188. 188? I don't know. It, yeah. it, so, because obviously when you were mentoring, it was a different experience in a sense. One second, I'm just going to yeah. fix this really quick. No, you're good. You were on a roll. There we go. I can't even do the math. I don't know how many so, days it was. So, my question is, you've spent a lot of days out on Survivor. And for those who don't know, Survivor isn't a normal reality TV show. You know, there's... No food being handed to you. You yeah. have to sleep outside with a bunch of strangers, find your own food, create your own fire. It's really difficult. How do you feel spending so much time in those kind of conditions contributed to who you are today? I don't know about all that, but I think, like, it is so hard. Like, that's the one thing. I've done so many TV yeah. shows. Survivor's real. That's, yeah. a lo that's like a lot of people don't uh -huh. realize that. They don't give you any help. Uh -huh. It's not like there's a cut time where like the cameras don't roll. Right. They shoot 24-7. They come in the morning. They shoot 12 hours. The crew changes. They shoot 12 hours. You go to challenges and like you don't have energy. You're starving. Yeah. But like what's amazing is like you don't realize what your body can do unless until you actually mm -hmm. push it. Right. Right. So like I know like. If I had to, I could go the next seven days without eating. Like, right, because you've done that. It's not going to, yeah, it's not like you're going to be okay. You're going to be super low energy. Yeah. You're going to be cranky. You're going to be irritable. Um, but I think, like, the main thing is you have to go in with a will and just a sense of, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And, like, what I would personally do is, like, I would look around and see the 24-year-old girl or right. the 70-year-old guy and look at them and be like, man, they're not complaining. Like, you're a healthy dude. Like, yeah. you better not complain. Yeah. Like, they're, you know, they're in a much different spot than you are in. Uh, so I tried to be conscious of that yeah. each day. It gave you a certain kind of awareness. And like I said, totally different than any other kind of reality TV. And no TV, no tech for today's generation. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people can't conceptualize what it's like to just be alone with your thoughts and other people in a sense. It's pretty awesome actually yeah. to like just, you know, disconnect. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of the physical stuff is not as important anymore in today's Survivor yeah. versus Survivor 20 years ago. Right. It used to be that you were valued for how you contributed at camp, if you were a provider, how good you were at the challenges, none of that stuff matters anymore. Yeah. Like literally, even like str your strategy, how well you, how strategic were you, right. you were and how well you were able to strategize was considered, you know, an asset. And now it's like almost all the focus is on the social game. Yes. Nobody cares about that stuff anymore. Why do anymore. you think that is? Well, because, like, ultimately, like, it's a game of politics, right? It's mm -hmm. a game of, you know, you you have two teams that compete against each other, and then that two teams becomes one mm -hmm. team. You're a family, but you're not really a family because only one person can win. You vote people out, and then at the end, you ask for their vote in return. And, like, um, I studied psychology at Boston University, cool. and I can tell you, like, the most important thing when you vote these people out is how you do it and how they feel about it. Uh -huh. Because the feeling they get when they're voted out, whether they feel like, you know, 
like you just slapped them aside and did them dirty or like right. if you do it with a little bit of tact, ultimately that's what's going to make the difference on whether they give you their vote or not in the end. Because it's more of a respect thing. I think so. You had a great quote. It was, it, I don't really care. So I'm butchering this a bit. I don't really care how strong my team is physically or even mentally, right. as long as they will obey. Obey. Would you right. say that was your overall strategy across <laughs> all seasons, or did that change? I mean, uh, I feel like I understood the game of Survivor from the beginning right. when other people maybe didn't understand it as well. And, um, I mean, there's different techniques you can use to get people to do what you want. If you're aware of yourself and you're aware of their self-awareness, right? It's like a little bit of a philosophical debate. Like, I know who I am. I know who you think I am. But do I know who you think, who that I think that you think? Exactly, you know, exactly. Like that little, psychology uh, played a role. Yeah. For sure. So you talk about studying psychology over at BU. Who, how do you think that kid who applied for Survivor however many years ago. Yeah. How do you think his game affected, you know, how well you did? Like, your personality yeah. and all of the attributes that made you who you were before Survivor, how did that give you a leg up in the game? You know, I I truthfully, like, graduated with a degree in psychology just because yeah. I like the classes and I like studying about psychology. Right. But I had no intention to yeah. ever become a psychologist. Like, I left college after five years and yeah. went to go work in construction because right. I love to work with my hands. Yeah. But I often, like, my mom and dad, I tell them, like, I use my education, just not in the traditional sense, you know? Absolutely. I end up using it on the island. But I think uh, there's lots of lessons that come from psychology that you learn in Survivor and human in the human experience. Like, one I, a question I get a lot is, like, how did you know when other people were lying to you? Right. And it's like, yo, it's so easy. If you want to know, if you want to know if someone's lying to you or not, just ask them a question that you already know the answer to and see how they respond. <laughs> That's genius. Like, it's so simple. <laughs> That's genius. But like, people don't Did get you use that. that a lot in Survivor? Of yeah. 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 I would know information about someone right. and that. Like, so like, what do you think about this? You know, and then you see, and then you, then you can see. And the other thing is you have to... Always try, and this is a good lesson for life too, not only for Survivor, you always have to try to see things through the other person's right. eyes, right? If you truly want to know what their motivation is or what their objective is, you have to understand their motivation. Right. And the only way you're going to do that is to see it through their eyes, not through yours. Because right. if you only look through your lens, you're not getting a, a clear picture. So try to flip it around and put yourself in their position and I think in life, if a lot of people did that in relationships, I mean, survivors ultimately game of relationships, Absolutely. right? So if you try to see it from the other person's perspective and really try to do it, which is hard, you know, if it was easy, then, you know, the divorce rate wouldn't be through the roof. Exactly. Relationships would all work out great. But if you can focus on it and do it, then I think you understand their motivation and then like, it's kind of sick, but it's easy to manipulate them. In a game like Survivor, you got to be able to do that. And make them almost feel like you're still their friend at the end of it as well. Right. Do you yeah. feel like some people get that wrong in terms of playing? Like, they almost play too maliciously where they get the manipulation down, but can't do it in a way that makes people want to give them their vote at the end? Well, you just have to make them feel like they're your friend until they cast yeah. that vote. After, it doesn't really matter, right? Absolutely. But, I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, I... I I feel like I've always easily been able to separate, you know, the game from real life. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that probably has to do with my upbringing, being from Boston, my right. family, and like, you know, like just being able to separate. Like I was the kid that like if the ball game got lost, you get up, shake the other guy's hand. All right, try harder yep. next time, kid. Yeah. And that's it. You know, Absolutely. like, we're not crying about it years later. Right. About what coulda, shoulda, woulda. Like, my dad would never stand for that. Absolutely not, right. So. So, from a combination of being from Boston and obviously spending a lot of time on Survivor, I think it's really contributed to, to you being able to read people really well and just kind of understand how people work. 
yeah. and how their minds work. And when you boil Survivor down, it can be equated to life in a lot of different ways. Have yeah. you found that you, it has increased your success rate in friendships, in your marriage, and overall just with people in general? I think like the biggest lesson is that like Survivor is a game of relationships and yeah. all of life is too, right? And through both of them, everybody faces like obstacles and challenges at one time of another. Whether it's, you know, uh, anything, any mm -hmm. kind of challenge with a relationship. The biggest thing is how you adapt to your situation, right? right? Because in Survivor, things are constantly changing. Right. There's a lot of stuff that happens beyond your control that you can't do anything about. How you respond to that adversity makes all the difference in the world. How like, did you find you usually responded to something, say, like a, a tribe switch or a merge? Yeah, I mean, in the, the early days when I was 25, I got yeah. mad and acted yeah. kind of crazy. Uh -huh. But then as I got older and as I grew and had more life experience, then, you know, I realized, well, there's stuff that, like, is beyond your control and you have to adjust and you have to figure it out and try to form new relationships right. with new people and what could I do here? I mean, you hear Probst say it all the time on the show, like, all you need is a little crack. You find a little crack, and next thing you know, you get in there, you work it a little bit, work it a little bit, and uh, next thing you know, you blow the whole thing wide open. So I think, you know, a combination of being persistent, not giving up, and being able to adapt are, like, the main keys that for anybody yeah. – in life, in any relationships, in Survivor, like, makes really good sense. What was the most difficult season for you? Physically. Either the Dirty weather... Dirty Water is sponsored by Clean Water today. <laughs> because, because Shannon's boyfriend gave me some beautiful you like it. filtered Don't water. I do good. like it. It's Fiji from tap. Fiji from the tap. Much less expensive. I feel like we just invented a new water, Fiji from the tap. There you go. We've had podcasts about this actual topic before, about good water. Yeah. It's important. It is important. You need to stay hydrated. Who knows what they're putting in that that unfiltered tap water? Come on. <laughs> Listen, I drank dirty water for 188 yeah. days, however long it was, and uh, I turned out just fine. Yeah, but, but that's just <laughs> dirt, you know? Like, who knows what the Boston... Uh, I don't even want to get sewers, into that. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that side of things. So we're talking dirty water in multiple different ways. When it came to Survivor and the conditions, have it be rain, lack of food, or just kind of the conditions that you they put you you in in general what was the most difficult the very first season that i was on the marquesas islands they had these bugs they were called they called them no-nos they were like nuseums they were like mosquitoes they would bite you and you would not know oh. that they bit you because <laughs> yeah. it didn't hurt when they bit you but the next like few hours later you'd have these enormous welts and they'd be incredibly itchy and you'd want to scratch them it should have been a dead giveaway when we got there. Like the entire production, the camera guys, the sound guys, they had like nets over their heads and their hands and their arms, like little nets. And they they duct taped themselves so they didn't get bit by these things. And production solution for us was to lather ourselves in this like dense oil that they gave us. And the theory was that the bug would land on us and drown. Oh my Which god. Was absurd and like everybody got killed. It affected other people worse than others yeah. just based on their skin. Yeah. But uh Marquesas was a really difficult location, uh, especially compared to them being in Fiji now. You know, right. like every season is like people pay thousands of dollars to go to Fiji it's for basically vacation. It's a tropical vacation, yeah. right. And it rains in Fiji, but I mean yeah. uh it's nothing compared to, like, what it was. We had a hurricane come through in uh, in All Stars in Panama. Nicaragua was pretty brutal, but Marquesas was definitely the worst. I put a poll out before you got here just asking some people what they wanted me to ask you, and one of them was, how did people fend off things like bugs or animals or really just other predators in general? Yeah, I mean, like, there's no production interference at all. So, like, that's what you have to understand, like, the producers, the camera guys, the sound guys, they'll never interfere with yeah. anything going on. They won't even speak to you. So you're on your own for that kind of stuff. And if anything happens, their job is to capture it. Right. And then after you're down, they'll call for medical or whatever. But they're not interfering. Gotta like get if, the shot. If you're on the edge of the cliff, they're going to let you fall, break your leg. 
And then they'll call someone yes, to come, to help, come you. help you. We had a horse, a wild horse, run through the camp in the Marquesas, kind of like blew us away, like like nobody expected it. Uh, man, we had like three bales of cocaine like wash up on the beach in Panama. <laughs> yep, and they can't, that's like, insane. There's been some wild things that have happened that like production like can't complain. Yeah. Like, nobody knows. But it was like these taped up like bales. Like everybody knew what it was, you know. What'd they, they do with it? They came right in and they're like, I don't know. You that's, know? Like, that's the last we saw of that. They did that didn't air. That it definitely was, did the not camp air. Camp was definitely not allowed to uh, keep those provisions. <laughs> so you guys are literally just in the woods. Yeah, it's real. Like we're out there. I mean, I know in Africa, I think like they had like marksmen, like in case there were lions and stuff, like outside of like the boma that they had. But um, for the most part, you're on your own. Yeah. I mean, um, on 40, I got stung by a stonefish, which, you know. Right. Medical's gotten a lot better though. Like in the early days, they would just like put some dirt on it, you'll be okay. <laughs> but they're pretty attentive if like right. it's a serious situation. Yeah. If you're uncomfortable and just complaining, like, they're not going to help you at all. Right. But if it's, like, uh, something legitimate, um, they have a great a great medical team. You and sign actually, off on everything, too, though, right? Like, are they not? Of course. Yeah. You sign off on everything. And Jeff is now the EP of the show, and he runs the show. But yeah. the final say, like, always comes down to medical and the boat drivers because the boat driver is, like, Safety. Safety is first. Yep. Safety and medical can overrule Jeff. Yep. So, like, when it's like, can he stay in the game? Can he not stay in the game? That's not even Jeff's call. That's tough. Yeah. But it kind of, it's kind of okay that it takes him out of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't look like, you know, it's being manipulated. It's a, it's a tough thing to sign up for. And I'm sure, like, signing those papers, you think, like, what could happen? Do you ever think you'll let your daughters go on the show? Do you want them I to mean, go on the show? they love it. They yeah. love watching it. They're young. You know, yeah. they're so far away from being on. Uh, my oldest is 12. They definitely want to. Like, you know, they see She it, could be on watch. in six years. I know. Can you imagine? But, like, that's the thing. Like, as an 18, 19, 20-year-old, Shoot, even at 25, yeah. I don't think really I had enough life experience yeah. to really comprehend everything. Right. And I don't want to put them into a situation where they won't succeed. Yeah. So it's almost like I would be like, listen, wait a little longer. Uh, but they have other aspirations too. I'm but, sure. But, but who knows? You know, you never know, right? I, one of them will make it on there. <laughs> the producers will be just itching to get uh, one of them on there, I'm sure, in the next couple of years. If they if Survivor can keep going without you, do you think you'll go back? I've I have officially retired from really? playing Survivor, yes. I uh like I, I don't want to hear any more calls about statues uh -huh, or, or uh -huh. reunions or anything. I love Survivor. I love everything like that has come from it. Right. But, you know, it's just there's really not a situation that I can think of that I wouldn't go out there and have a huge target and automatically, exactly. you know, be immediately like just targeted. And that's kind of like what's the point of going there if you can't like, you right. know, win? Right, right. I, I respect the retire ending with the the legendary season forty yeah. makes sense. But let's say hypothetically you were to go back, who would be the <laughs> one, two, or three players you would really want to play with? I mean, I've already played with them all. Uh huh. I don't. This know. This was another fan question. This feels like something that's going to come back to haunt me. I know. Poker Alliance. <laughs> I I they defer. This... I defer to uh... <laughs> to say. Yeah. No. I'm, I mean, I'm not going. Like, I yeah. don't. There's no one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the truth is, there's no one. Like, I've played with the best of the best right. with all of them. I'm friends with a lot of them. And, uh, you know, I think, like, starting with season 41, the one that's on now, Jeff said, like, you know, this is a new generation. This is a new era. And I feel happy to pass the torch right. to the new guys. Let's right. see what you can do. Let's see. And... Then at the end of uh, season 80, you know, we'll talk about it then. We'll see what happens. After they have 40 seasons <laughs> yes. with the new era of doing things. <laughs> exactly. I would love to go on that show. I, I don't know if you have any, you know, pull anywhere. I think I would crush that show. The one thing that could get me is the physical conditions just because I'm so fair-skinned. Yeah. I feel like I'd get the worst sunburn of my life, very likely. But other than that, when it comes to the people and the gameplay, I would love 
to show them how it's done. Have you ever sent an application? I have. You yes. Have. Yeah. I, I sent in, I believe it was like a short video I sent in. I applied for Big Brother too, but I would want to be on Survivor way more. That's like the number one thing people tell me they want to be on Survivor. Yeah. I ask them, have you sent a video? Yes. 99% of them say no. So the fact that you have, you're already taking the right steps oh, in yeah. the right direction. The other thing I'll tell you is the advice I gave earlier. Be persistent. Keep knocking at the door. Right. Because they like that. And a lot of times, they might like someone, but you're not right for that particular season. Uh -huh. So because they have a certain uh -huh. theme or whatever in mind. And I would just say keep going for it. Yeah, for sure. I'll keep applying. Yeah. What's awesome about Survivor is it doesn't really seem like they go for the same kind of demographic every year. It's not like some shows like obviously The Bachelor or Big Brother. It's a much younger audience. I feel right. like you can hit your cap. They'll put, you know, like Grandma Joe, 65-year-old from <laughs> Alabama out there and just go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll keep going for it. Absolutely. Maybe I'll even throw some clips of this podcast in there. Get the... Get your that face on there. If to they're get watching probes, take a look at <laughs> yeah. it. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> I think it would be fun. I yeah. think it would be really awesome. Let so, me ask you a question. Do then. it. So <laughs> why do you want to be on the show? Oh, that's a great question. I want to be on the show. One, because I really like to get the most out of life. That's kind of a corny answer, but I love new experiences. I love doing new things all the time. Like, for example, I started this podcast like four months ago. I'm right. just, I love meeting new people. I love going to new places. And I love challenging myself. Okay. That's something. And I find that it would be a really great mental challenge for me that I'd really be willing to take on fully. That's adventurous. You're going for the adventure. That's yes. really good. Yes. What would you do if you won a million dollars? If I won a million dollars... Honestly, I'd invest. I'd probably buy some properties in uh, a couple different places. I think the real estate market right now is a really smart place yeah. to be investing. Um, the U.S. dollar is kind of just depleting in general. So I'd definitely invest in some things, but then I'd probably also go on like some sort of six-month experience or so. Okay, so from a casting perspective, I just interviewed cool. you. You crushed answer number one, yeah. right? You definitely want to go for the adventure. Yes. Answer number two? You bombed. Yeah, which Nobody I say donate. Nobody wants to hear that you're going to invest yeah. it. I don't know what the end, what the, like, you know what I mean? Like, no, that's I'm going to use it for what, See, whatever. See, that might not have been what I said if I was getting interviewed for real, though. Oh, okay. What did you say? Uh, I think I said I was going to go and blow it in the Caribbean on a body <laughs> or something. I don't know. Realistically, I'd probably go on some crazy trip. I love traveling, and I love, uh, like— if I just was given this amount of money, I'd be like, all right, I can take the next X amount off. Let me go see That's this awesome. place, this That's place, a good this answer. place. Those are two questions. The yeah. reason I asked you those two questions, those are two questions inevitably they are going to ask you. Oh, Catholic. absolutely. Why do you want to be on the show? Um, what would you do with the money? And what kind of a game are you going to play? Uh -huh. Like, who do you think you're like or whatever? And then a lot of people are like, I'm not like anyone. It's like, yeah, there's been like 600 people on the show. You're probably like, <laughs> like one somebody. Of them. Like so somebody. You're the most I unique think, person. I would we like ever to found. think I'd be like Parvati, but like yeah. I also don't remember her early gameplay that strongly. I just think she's awesome. Yeah, so therefore, Parvati crushes. Yeah, she's she, a she's a good player. Um, she's a good friend of mine too, and like I think she, uh, I think a lot of people want to play like Parvati uh -huh. because she symbolizes i think what a lot of you know people aspire to to be uh -huh. like she's strong she's confident yes. she's good yeah. at the challenges yeah good at the strategic good right. at the social it's like a, a triple threat like yeah. those are the three main parts of right. survivor right like the the physical game the strategic mm -hmm. game and most importantly the social mm -hmm. game so to be able to be your friend, yeah. manipul manipulate you, and still get your vote yeah. in the end. Yeah. It's a certain skill set. It's tough to do, but that's the thing. Yeah. I think I'm really good with people. Like I've gotten, I was almost too good with people to the point where I was like, wait, like I'm too much of a people pleaser. At a, in a sense, like I was class president. Like I was good with getting people to like me. Oh, so you're an overachiever, and you're used was. to getting what you want. You, yeah, I was. I was. Recently, I've just been a little bit more aware of like saying no and like hanging out with people that I just actually like being around because okay. all of a sudden you can get to a place especially like when you're younger and you go through this like you go through this stage where you just want to have as many friends as possible and do well in everything but then you get to a place like wait like, I don't even really like these yeah. people well that's important too yeah. though to, to recognize self growth mm -hmm. and like you know, like, I don't know you so well, but I know you enough to be able to see within you that you're a go-getter, like right. you're, you're entrepreneurial, you. you're starting, you know, reaching out and mm -hmm. going for what you want. And exactly. that's like, really, a lot of people never learn that. That's like, 
That's most of the battle is to be able to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to fa fail. Right. Try different things. And ultimately, throughout that process, you grow and learn. And uh, I think you're on the right track for thank sure. Thank you. Thank you. I think you. you'd be great on Survivor. I think I would be too. I'm glad I have your, your, your stamp of approval. Yeah. So you say that they also could ask you, who do you think you play like? Who do you think, maybe other than yourself, has played one of the best games ever? I think Parvati has yeah. always played a great game. Uh, Sandra's iconic mm -hmm. in that she doesn't play a game that I relate to in almost any capacity, yet she's been able to win twice. So there's something that has to be said for that, you right. know? Uh, her social game had to be that much better than her physical and strategic game yeah. in order for her to get to where right. she got. And of course, Tony. Tony plays a, a a great game too. You know, it's erratic. He gets you off base. He does things to kind of throw you in a different direction. I think uh, Parvati, Sandra, and Tony yeah. definitely play great games. Yeah, Tyson, friend of mine. I want to put him in that category, but yeah, you know, we we still got that hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that did. He's still getting happen. better. Yes. No. Honestly. Andrea plays really good. Andrea from Redemption Island mm -hmm. played a few times after me. I was impressed with her game. Obviously, uh, guys like Joe and Ozzy, their physical games are like awesome. top, top notch, yeah. right? But like. That's just the thing. Their physical games are so good, but their strategic and their social They're games so are like, kind of like lacking a little. <laughs> They're so cute. They're right? so cute. So you can't do that. You'll fall yeah, for I that. I know. I know. I have a boyfriend. So do you think that plays a role with getting on the show? Do they want single people because they want people like flinging they want in a all sense? kinds of people. Yeah. Of course, I feel like it's they're a the only show. Line. I feel like they're the only show that actually still does that. Yeah, but like Survivor, like they don't like they don't like produce anything yeah. like they don't like force anything and I gotta tell you the survivor experience being there so close with yeah. those people for such a long time mm -hmm. I think they got a better track record than The Bachelor oh absolutely I think there's like five couples from Survivor that's been married but not only that like beyond that the crew of like three four hundred people uh -huh. I want to say there's been like 20 or 30 babies born from relationships and then the people, people who meet from there. different seasons too I'm sure yeah I feel like you get like a, a little bit of a better crew on Survivor just in general. The people that come on, you know, you get the, these young, unexperienced people going on The Bachelor, yeah. The Bachelorette. I think the reason why, like, the relationships work on Survivor versus, like, The Bachelor or something like that yeah. is because it's not fake. Like, it's right. not staged. It's not like you're going on these absurd, ridiculous dates where you're going on a helicopter uh -huh. and this and that. Like, after you've been there, where do you go? You got right. nowhere to go but down. Right. We're on Survivor. You're with somebody 24-7. Right. You get to see what somebody's really made of, uh -huh. and you have nothing. Like, the first yeah. date, like, I got Amber a fish. Like, I caught her a fish. Like, here you go. <laughs> so, like, when you go home, and you're like, oh, we got a roof? Like, we, we got air Forks? conditioning, yeah. ice water, clean, filtered water? Like this, like everything's better. <laughs> yes, you know? exactly. How do you think meeting your wife, your wife on Survivor, I like know. what's the foundation of your relationship in terms of where it started in Survivor? Like how was that? Yeah, it was wild. Like I said, like we saw each other at our lowest lows and we experienced yeah. some pretty awesome highs. We've been married uh, 16 and a half years now. We have four beautiful daughters. All of it because of like meeting on yeah. the show. So it's crazy. Like you meet people at different places and whatever, and things happen for a reason. And, uh, you know, I'll always be grateful to Survivor mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Random question, but where do you think you would be without Survivor? It's been such yeah. a big part I of your know. life. It's kind of hard to say. Like yeah. people ask, like, what would you have done different this season uh -huh. or that season? Like a lot of people that have played once or like things didn't work out. Right. They only see the reverse also through their own filter and through their own with their own narrative. Mm -hmm. So like go ask any other survivor that's played one time. And I promise you, every single one of them will be able to tell you, well, if this happened, then I would have won yeah. the game. Like, one little thing is going right. to lead to everything else. And I, like, realize that's kind of, like, ridiculous to think. So I always say that, like, everything that happened, like, where I finished on each and every season or whatever, everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. 
like meeting Amber, like everything happened because it all led me to where I am today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So like, I don't know, like, would I, I would never do anything different. It's like everything happened the way it was supposed to. And mm -hmm. like, I'm good with that. Yeah. So I don't know where I'd be without yeah. it. Like, who cares, right? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. I'd probably be like, you know, still on a construction site in Boston. Right. Slinging who brick knows? or something. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe bot Dating someone from the greatest bar, probably. <laughs> bot <laughs> the greatest bar. Yeah. I don't maybe, know. Maybe you still would have ended up right here on this podcast. I might have I I outgrown that a little. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? And that, like, you say all these things, like lessons that you've learned from Survivor or your responses to questions related to Survivor. They're just great life lessons. Yeah. I think like just a lot of it is common sense, too. Yeah. In this day and age, like, it's lacking, you know, uh -huh. like, like, uh, like, people are a little bit out to lunch, you know, like, what happened to, like, just being back to basics? And, like, I think a lot of, like, the lessons that my mom and dad taught me when I was a kid, I used on that show, and I'm now trying to pass on to my kids with my wife. And I think, like, the foundation of all of that is, like, common sense. Like, just do the right thing. Be a decent person. Don't get out of line too much. You can yeah. still have some fun. Yeah. But, like, let's not, let's not, like, you know, start losing it or right. anything. Right, right. Yeah. It's very awesome. I love how, like, your morals came from first your parents, obviously, and being from Boston and then translated through your show led to a lot of your success. And now you're able to pass that down to your daughters. I, I, I just think that's so inspiring and, and, and so awesome. So I had, a, I had another fan question here. Let me see. Okay, so we well, were talking about perspective, right? And we were talking about you and Amber dating on the show mm -hmm. and then coming off the show and being like, wow, we have AC. Like, this is awesome. Like, things can only go up from here. Yeah. How was your perspective after coming off the show, maybe after the first or second time, just a normal life and like being appreciative for fresh food and restaurants and a clean bed? Yeah. I mean, like, it's it's amazing. Like, the this awareness you have when you're, in that situation mm -hmm. and you come home and you see the abundance and everything else and it makes you so super grateful. It really does. Yeah. The problem is after a certain amount of time, it's fleeting and you go back to like just taking it for granted. So like I would constantly put myself in difficult situations to become appreciative again. Finally, after I won the show, like, you know, they said, what did you do with the money? Like, after, it doesn't matter. You got the money. So yeah, you can do what yeah, you want with yeah. it. Invest it, put it uh -huh, away for college, uh -huh, just uh -huh. and everything else. But I did go, this is going to sound so ridiculous, but like, <laughs> I went and bought a refrigerator. I always wanted one of those refrigerators that you press a button and you get ice and water, right? Like, it's just a stupid little thing. But like, it's so convenient. And every time I do it, I think about my time on the island. Have to like go to the top of the island, yeah. get the water, bring it down, boil it, clean it, and here it is so easy to just do that. Right there. And I kind of like did that just to make myself thankful. But the truth is it it goes away unless you constantly yeah. put yourself in difficult situations. How do you keep that kind of gratitude just in your everyday life other than putting yourself in difficult situations, yeah, I mean, you know? Yeah, it that's like the main thing that I do. I yeah. don't know. Like you you try to just Treat people how you want to be treated and mm -hmm. be grateful for mm -hmm. what you have because, like, you know, there's a lot of people that don't. There are some people that just see the good in things, yeah. you know, and I think it's a mindset. You have to train yourself to do right. that. I think something that's interesting is my generation specifically, there's like this anxiety decade that's going on right now. And a lot of it comes from social media and comparison and seeing all the things out there in the world that you don't have, right? right. I feel like a lot of people struggle with just baseline happiness. And I think it's because they struggle to see what they do have and they are focused too much on what they don't have. And I think an experience like Survivor kind of brings you down to this point like, okay, well now you're sleeping on a beach, you know, you're sleeping outside yeah. and you're, you're bugs are eating you. And so obviously you're very grateful for just the day-to-day -day life that you have. And, you know, I don't think everyone needs to, you know, go to a remote island with a bunch of strangers, you know, walk up hills for water, but some perspective would probably help. I think you're right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, look at everything kind of goes in cycles. Yeah. And I think like the foundation of certain people are like, obviously you're affected by your surroundings, right? So just try to put yourself around like-minded people right. that, or find people that that 
you aspire to be like and surround yourself with them yeah. if you can. Yeah. Right? And like the materialistic stuff is garbage. It doesn't yeah. matter. You right. know, like at my point in my life, like I see like my parents getting older, my kids getting older. You suddenly become aware of how fast everything is going. Like it's absurd to say this, but like the older you become, the faster it goes. It's true. And then like you can do anything. You just have to take the first step. Yeah. Start. Yeah. That's the hardest step yeah. every single time. I had a passion for doing construction. Yeah. I love to cook. I love all these things. And like, I finally said, I'm going to buy a house and renovate it. So yeah. I did it. And it yeah. was like that first step took years to do. But I promise like the younger you are, the more you can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You can like, you can try again. Yeah. And it's okay to fail. Like, you're not really failing if you learn something. Right. Like, what's the worst thing that happens? Okay, disaster. We lost our money. It didn't work. Well, now we learned something. Yeah. Don't do it like that again. Mm -hmm. exactly. The only problem is if you make the same mistake and keep repeating, keep exactly. repeating, then, you know, then maybe. That's you where you need, get stuck. Yeah, That's then where you, you get need, stuck. like, uh, intervention. Somebody exactly. to help you <laughs> exactly. out. Exactly. So, no more Survivor. That's for sure. We're retiring. We're leaving it to the next generation. What's What are you excited about? What's next? I mean, I love, like, just spending time with my family. Yeah. You know, I'm still, like, involved in lots of different mm -hmm. projects and stuff. Uh, we're in Boston this week shooting a new project for Hearst Media, uh -huh. which has been a lot of fun. It's been so cool being back here. Yeah, I've been here for two weeks. I love I love the city. The weather's been so good that it's like guts me thinking about like moving home. But I know like in another month and a half, yeah, it's going to be rain mind. and yeah. be dreary. Yes. Uh, but I love being in Florida too. Um, my kids are at the age where it's just magical. It's like an adventure. Like yeah. we went on a road trip yeah. this summer, had so much fun. Um, that and, looked so fun. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that RVing trip. So we went... Um, we went to Pennsylvania, my niece's um, high school graduation and Father's Day. And then we took an RV. We got an RV. We picked it up there, went up to like Niagara Falls, came That's across awesome. New York through like New Hampshire, like North yeah. Conway, places I went when I was yeah. a kid, into Boston. We went to Fenway over to Cape Cod, saw mom and dad for the fourth, yeah. and then took it all the way down the East Coast. So it was like a fun right. Camping adventure slash history slash hanging out with family. That's awesome. And they're young enough where like they loved it. And uh, like, I don't think I could do it like, you know, five years right. from now when they're 17. They're like, yeah, all right. Just that happens. <laughs> yes. Uh, but now it was just perfect. And uh, it was a fun summer vacation for That's sure. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned loving to cook too. And again, this was a fan question that I'm also just wondering about. You love to cook. You obviously mm -hmm. love food. When you got back from Survivor, what was the first thing you ate? So I can remember specifically the first time I went to Marquesas because I was voted off early. I didn't like I ate on the uh, jury trip. Yeah. So I didn't. Uh, there's nothing that comes to mind. The second right. time after All Stars, we left Panama. I was in Boston less than 12 hours after yeah. that last tribal council. Wow. And my parents, I had them pick up a pizza from Regina's oh and bring God. it to me at Logan at the airport. <laughs> and I ate the entire pizza <gasps> before we got to the house. That's amazing. And then on. Uh, God, it's so hard to remember. I yeah. remember the pizza from Regina's. Yeah. And I remember uh, landing in Los Angeles for one of the ones we were in the South Pacific. Yeah. And we went to a bunch of places down in uh, Venice Beach. That's awesome. Yeah. I, my, my choice would absolutely be pizza as well. So yeah. we've covered a lot here. But to all sum right. it all up, one thing I want to ask you is, there's someone out there who has the dream of going on Survivor or really has the dream to do anything. What would yeah. your advice to them be? Well, I mean, for Survivor, first and foremost, you have to apply. You want yeah. to be on the show, apply. They're always looking for new people. Yeah. Definitely send in a video, mm -hmm. make a video. Be yourself on the video. Like, they look for all different kinds of people. Yeah. You don't want to, like, worry about what they want. Just be yourself. Yeah. If you're right, they'll take you. Right. You know? And you might not be right for that particular season. Yeah. So that's why I would say keep reapplying if something changes yeah. in your life, if you're doing something different. If you applied five years ago and your situation's different now, reapply, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, 
And in life in general, I mean, she is just the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh-huh. You know, you want something, like just work hard at it. You know, like work smart, try different things. Don't be afraid to fail and just try doing it. Cause I mean, you don't know unless you try, right? right? Sounds like ridiculous. I love advice, it. I love like, it. You're a great, great interviewee. This has oh, been awesome. You have you. awesome responses. I'm sure you have a lot of experience with this, but it's been really, really fun talking with you. I've it's gotten great. a lot of great insights. Well, I think you have a bright future ahead of you, Shannon, and I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun for me, too. This was great. Thank you so much. I hope to see you very soon, and good luck with all the future endeavors with those beautiful daughters that you have. All right. Thank you. <laughs>